Hey, everybody, this is Sheets, and I have, uh, as usual, uh, Mike Brave, Jayhawk Jensen with me. But unfortunately, the mojo has been broken up a little bit. We do not have the lawnmower in the back because it is not Wednesday. Uh, had to uh, rearrange some things uh, for yesterday. Was unable to do it yesterday, so we're going to be doing it today. Thank you for Mike to Mike for being flexible with this. So as usual, we are going to review what happened last week. And then uh, get into what happened this week. I guess I'm gonna. I'll start off. Yep. I had I had um uh, again. I have two pools remaining. I have they're both for a lot of money. <laughs> uh, one is on office football pool. Um, it is. It was going into last week. It was down to seventy people, um, paying a ton. Uh, and I went with. Uh, and I'm also excuse me. And I also am on the DraftKings big. $1.8 million chop fest, I imagine. Uh, and I had two. Did that, did that, I'm sorry. That start the regular season. I know, I, I know you can yes. buy it. Okay. Yeah. There's like first chance, second chance, third, fourth, fifth chances, but no, yeah. I, no this is just the pure one. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, I will share my screen with those just so we are um, whatever. So in those picks um, uh, in, the, in that pool on office football <laughs> pool, I went with Denver and actually with Pittsburgh. So I was between I was between three teams as my top ones. Uh one Denver. I like Denver. I like the Jets. I liked the uh Chargers. And I liked all three of them. And I had Pittsburgh like kind of well below them. But the problem was I had four picks and I really couldn't distinguish between those top three. So uh instead of going two on one of them and one two one one, I went for more diversification and I moved Pittsburgh up into the list. So I made I made four of them. So in the run your pool one, I went with Denver in one of them and on Pittsburgh on the other one, and that obviously uh, both them advanced. And in the DraftKings one, I went one Chargers which advanced and one Jets which did not. So I'm down to one entry in the DraftKings one, and uh, that one has. Uh, that one now has, it looks as though 273 people out of one 18,515 started. So that's, uh, it's getting down there a little bit. And this one, the, uh, office football pool one, this one's got only 61 left. Okay. Uh, from 46,000, 4,600 total, whatever. So, uh, overall, I guess I would say I was fair. You know what I mean? It, when you play, when you play four picks, you rate yeah. somewhere between two and three of them. You know what I mean? So to get three of them through, it, it's pretty good. I wish that, you know, that there was a little more blood out there. There was a, there was a little bit. The like for, On the one hand, there was, you know, these, you know some people that took the Jets. So the, the, my, my non-Jets entries uh, kind of thanked them a little bit. But And there was a couple of people that took Baltimore. Um, you know, the, those, those kind of you know, got, got out of there. I mean, this pool started with 70, so it did lose nine people. Then there was a, there was a couple of weird ones. One, um, one Miami went down. There were a couple of Kansas cities that were kind of fighting uh, to survive against the Raiders for a while, but overall pretty chalky week. Most people took Detroit and, uh, and they put up a, a five, a five piece, a five handle against, uh, against, uh, against Tennessee. So overall I would say fair, um, and, uh, we move on. Uh, tell me about your pool again. Tell everybody again, let's say if they're joining now, what pool you're in and, uh, and what you did. Well, this comment on, on yours first, it is tough when, and I'm not, I mean, I, I'll take, you know, that many teams sometimes as well in the mi middle stages, you, you kind of just got to be happy, you know, with three, you're, you're almost always going to lose some equity unless mm -hmm. you get the right team yep. to lose that will knock out you yep. know, a, a good chunk. And, th and and this was relying on, you're basically hoping to advance three in a realistic scenario with Denver or Detroit right. losing. And you, right. did, and you did fantastic. That's right. Um, okay. So for mine, uh, first pool, uh, three-time form, uh, three former champion, uh, 17 to enter the week in this one. And we lost one person on uh, the New York Jets. Uh, very favorable uh pick breakdown i'm just gonna open it up really quick i was in vegas this past weekend oh yeah um for the chiefs raiders game i didn't go but uh -huh. good ex good excuse to go i 
if I wasn't in Survivor, I probably would I I would have went. But did you, did you go to Circa and check it out over there? Oh well, yeah, oh yeah. I spent all day. I spent th- most of the day there on Saturday. I, I nice. love going there. I love going there. Nice. Uh, we had uh, we had. I, I took Denver, and I was all over Denver this week. The only Denver entry I didn't take was the, the one in which I'd already used them in, in, in the other pool. So I uh, seventeen going into the week, seven Denver, uh, four Detroit, two Houston two Pittsburgh, one Kansas City, and one Jets. I, I mean, great breakdown from uh, my perspective. Um, got, almost got ex- no volume in the sports book on the Houston game, but uh, man, I, was in, I was in shock when that, that uh, fumble six happened uh, for the Colts. I, I, I guess he was down, but um, you didn't know that at the time, um, not watching with volume. But, uh, you know, getting, getting the Jets upset was really nice. So d- down, to, down to 16. Um, and then the other pool, the other pool went really well. And I didn't realize it till afterwards. Uh, w- one of my, uh, one of my friends had to inform me of the very good news. 25 people were on Miami, which I knew, but I didn't realize that one person had 20 entries left in the pool and they took them all on Miami. Oh my God. <laughs> um, and that, that, I mean, that's a big time gambling right there. I, Rough. uh, um, so that, that was, uh, that was a huge EV oh boost my God. That's, for that. Uh, uh I, 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 man, I couldn't fathom doing something like that. I mean, I, I'll do some crazy stuff, but I would have rather went all in on Denver than, um, even touch Miami for a, a tickle, but we entered the week with 600 ish and we lost, we lost 53, we, uh, 8% on Baltimore, 5% on the jets, 4% on Miami. So really good week. 527 left that has doubles uh, coming up very soon in 12 and 13 also 16 17 18 and I have three entries left I, I went to Denver and one Detroit and again the only reason I took that Detroit is I'd already used Denver I had already used Pittsburgh and for that pool I didn't want to use I don't want to I didn't want to use any Houston or the Jets because of upcoming possibilities for the double pick weeks so uh very 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 good week um overall realistically it couldn't have got much better than that unless i mean i mean obviously pittsburgh losing would have been nice uh for me but uh very good week so as usual we're going to go through this and uh also as usual it's uh, it, as we go on in the season this disclaimer becomes just even more prevalent more important is that it really depends on what you guys have left and what and you know what your pool individual pool looks like as far as breakdowns go um but uh we're going to go through again the the, the process is we're going to first have have Mike kind of just x out um who just is just not playable um and I'll probably either confirm that or or tweak that and then we're just going to go over our top possibilities um and as usual Mike and I never talk about this beforehand we get a fresh look on it and it's 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 usually pretty healthy this way you know uh sometimes Mike says something I didn't think about and sometimes I say something Mike didn't think about and uh with any luck it will you know will help each other and not blow each other up in our pools as a result of these uh, extra opinions. Um, okay. So why don't we just get started? Uh, we're looking at survivor grids. I'm, I'm sorting it by EV for now, um, unless there's some other way to do it because like, to, cause, cause, to, cause this week, like EV kind of falls in line with, with win percentage for the most part. Yeah. Not like, you know, you have one of those weird situations where someone who is, you know, a really good chance to win is in terrible EV because everybody's picking them. Um, okay. First, first, I'd like to point out, and uh, we 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 talked about it a little bit last week, but Eric and I had very different directions this past week, and I mean, it, it doesn't mean that I, you know, that one of us played it wrong. We just, you know, part of it is I didn't have uh, Pittsburgh available in, in in either of my pools, so it wasn't even. This wasn't the option wasn't even on the table. You're not, still, even, you're not even you're not even taking Pittsburgh in the one with 17 left anyway. No, of course, of course. But for like for the other one, it would have been, you know, possibly a consideration. But I probably would I personally probably would have went Denver anyway. Yeah. But uh, again, it, this isn't solved stuff because a lot of it depends on if you know who your opponents are taking. Right. Then it's solvable. But you know, you know, each pool is a little bit different and leans a, li- a little bit differently depending on who's left, especially when you have. You know, uh, you know, if you have someone with 20 entries left and you know that they're playing extremely aggressively, if, if you can kind of 
guess what type of direction they're going to yeah, go. But you, in terms yeah, but of you were never, you, but you were never going to guess that someone's going to take twenty Miami's. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, but that, that's that's going to start playing into into right. my strategy on, uh, you know, basically. I want I want remind me later on on Philadelphia a Philadelphia note, uh, but for this week that my you know I, I have two clear throwaways, and. It's Kansas City and Philadelphia, and and, and the, these these ones are very clear because of what they have ahead. They both play Carolina. Kansas City plays them in twelve. Philadelphia plays them in fourteen. As it is right now, these will be the highest spreads in an NFL game in five plus years. I mean, there's you don't have many eighteen point spread NFL games, but that's what it it's currently looking like. And it comes down to – your pool is going to go to these weeks anyway. Uh, if you have three people left, this is, this is you know, different conversation. But for my pools, 500-ish left, 16 left. If I'm going to still, still be in this thing, it, you know, we're at least going to 12. And when you look at week 12, Kansas City's 18.5-point favorite, and then you uh, Detroit is uh, like a touchdown-ish favorite. So do you want to, uh, you know, at, at the absolute worst or at the absolute best, you could have an 11 point favorite less if you didn't have Kansas city there. So you can, you can force drop now, or you can choose to drop. You can, you can force drop later for, or, or, or choose to drop now. But again, it's not only about dropping and there's, there's a lot of good options this week, but you, you, you have to look ahead in these situations because really taking Kansas City at any point so far this season, they're, they're really – I don't see how there could be any logic to it because these games are always on the schedule. Carolina was bad for, right from the start. Las Vegas wasn't as bad, but, you know, they, very favorable matchup for the mid part of the season. You, you have to save Kansas City and Philadelphia here for these slam dunk weeks. These picks are so slam dunk. It doesn't matter if everybody in the pool – you know, t- you know, who has them remaining takes them in those weeks. The EV is still going to be very, extremely high. With that said, I mean, you know, remember a couple of weeks ago, you know, more than half the pools just dumped Philadelphia. So Philadelphia is going to be, you know, they're, they're going to be much scarcer than they, than than other teams uh, uh, in week 14. Like, even if it gets a, a weird run out, they, they at most are going to be like 40% owned in pools. So, no, that, and that's a good point, too. So, it, in my double picks pool, I, I can't remember why, but and I already knew that about that, Carolina. I did take Philadelphia in two of my three entries in double picks in, in my double picks pool in week six. Um, that was probably to save some other teams. So, um, that makes Philadelphia even scarcer. So, for th- those in that that specific pool, it's really important not to take Philadelphia because they're only like 20% owned. 20% available remind in, in me, that pool. Remind me which in, in your double pick pools when when the double picks are? Uh 12, 12, 13, and then 16 out. 12, so. 13, and then 16 out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh now where where do you want to um where do you want to drop out like like the bottom? Like who, who's like the and then we'll get rid of all of these. Like where where do you want to where do you want to make the cutoff like as far as like the bow wows go? Like, uh Washington? Washington down. So we'll just, just to satisfy my OCD, we'll just mm-hmm. X all this out, um, and then we'll get here. Okay, so, all right. So I'm gonna add one thing, and if if you didn't, you know, uh, uh, if you didn't, uh, if you we're gonna say this is whatever. So Buffalo, I think, is is a throw out as well because um, I agree. Yeah, if in fact you do have them, like you're gonna want them in sixteen. Um, and and it's not even remotely close, you know. Like they're they're the minus seventeen point favorite uh, example in week sixteen. They're or seven all, or seventeen. Or, the, Jets, if the Jets are out. Aaron Rodgers might not play. Exactly. Or or eighteen. By the way. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Um. So that, that, that's, that's uh, a two touchdown favorite if uh, if they need to win that game to preserve a seed. Yeah. So if you are, I mean, I and again, one of my entries does have Buffalo available. So I want to keep them up here just to remind myself to show you something. So, um, yeah. One of my entries does have Buffalo available, and and I am saving them just to kind of show you what this is, what this kind of does to me um, as far as my allocation goes. It's good. So we got we have uh, Baltimore, New Orleans, Cincinnati, and Minnesota as as what's left. Okay, yeah. let 
let's start. See, this is the way I'm looking at it, and I'll and I'll go first here. I yeah. I looked at Baltimore, New Orleans, and, and Cincinnati actually at the beginning of the week as as kind of the same um, for me because. At the beginning of the week, they all had the same EV. Now Cincinnati has dropped for some reason in EV. I don't know why that is, but 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 they've dropped. But I, I regarded them as the same only because, like as far as future value goes, these guys are really really interchangeable. Sort of later, not only say it's interchangeable, but you could screw around. You know what I mean? Like if you yeah. took Cincinnati, you you can live with it. You know what I mean? Because then you save Baltimore, right? And you could have Baltimore say for for fifteen, for example, okay, or Baltimore for eighteen. So there's certainly value in saving Baltimore, and there's also value in saving Cincy if you can get away with it because you could play them in sixteen, you could play them in seventeen, okay, um, uh, maybe even in thirteen, although I doubt it. Okay, so sixteen and seventeen. So Cincinnati does have some future value, um, but it's not like either of those are total hammer slam dunk. So you. So they look the same to me, and and New Orleans, they they actually the more I thought about it, were to me was the best play of them all because their EV is no different and their their future value is much weaker. Like I I'm, I'm only looking at maybe well this is relevant like home against Vegas in seventeen. Like if they can get their act together and Derek Carr is you know what I mean like is healthy and they're yeah you know, th- th- then they're sort of viable too. So I think that the three of those have you know you could kind of like interchange those somewhat and you can make a case for all them and then the one that's kind of like hanging out um after that is minnesota okay so their ev is a little worse but but their future value i mean you could say that it's not bad either you know what i mean you could play them in 13 against arizona you may though may not be able to play them in 14 depending on what happens with atlanta you, you may be able to play them in 15. It's unclear. So the way I look at it, it looks as though Minnesota is in contention only because I do think they have the least future value of all of them, but you pay for that in having a little bit less EV. So, but so the way, unfortunately, the way I'm kind of approaching my pools this year is because I have three available, like I'm not, I'm going to, it's going to be hard for me to make the case to bring Minnesota up into the, into the list for me. Um, but then, like, when I'm looking and I see Cincinnati's, like, their EV is starting to creep down, like, just almost the same as Minnesota. Now Minnesota is really starting to fight in my world to, to be that third pick. Um, I want to go into more of, like, uh, like mapping uh, as, as yeah. and, and into this. But wh- why don't you start with, like, you just you kind of like your overall forensic analysis of those four teams? Yeah, I, I, I want to start in Minnesota because Minnesota doesn't look like a team – you know, they have some medium shades of green on, on, on survivor grid out, out there in the, yeah. in the you know, the very early future, but to see their value, you really have to map out what you have for the rest of the rest of the season. And, and, and I, I did, I did some, I did some full mapping for both, for both my pools. And when I'm mapping, what I'm, what I'm doing is what, like what I talked about earlier, I put, I just, I just auto put Philadelphia for 14 and, and the, and the two entries that I have yes. them remaining, yes, just, just auto put them and, and, and then work backwards. And then now Kansas city was a little trickier because you can play them anywhere. <laughs> you can play them. You know, I was looking at, tw- you know, obviously I was looking at 12 and 13 and then one of my pools is double picks. So it's like, do I want to use them for doubles in 12 or do I want to use them for doubles in 13? But here's the thing. It doesn't really matter. I just, I just plug them for either of them. And then I eliminate, you know, both those teams from consideration for all of the weeks leading up until those weeks. And then you, and then you eliminate you, by limit. I mean, you go on survivor grid, you cross out the row for the teams you've already used. And it, there's a lot less teams. It's like when we're talking about, well, we, we haven't in a while, but for talking about circa for the shorter weeks for the Thanksgiving Sunday slate, and then for the the Christmas uh, main uh, the Christmas week slate, not the Christmas day slate, but the main main part. When you when you pull out three or four games, there's and then you picked, you know, 10, 10 or sixteen picks up until that point. There's a lot less options. And what I want is I want as many options because although I'm I always talk about 
wanting to save particular teams for certain par- parts of the season because of like a slam dunk game like Philadelphia for, for a particular week or a team that has a run. Minnesota also has a run. 10, 11, and 13 are very viable options for Minnesota. They're not like single teams like, oh, I have to have Minnesota – but I have them in groups, and right. for what, what I, I have, I have, I have five teams written down for Week Ten, um, and Minnesota is one of them. I have six teams written down for Week Thirteen, and and yeah, that I mean those are big numbers. But you know, if I if I I want as I, I would like to have as many options as possible. And the reason I would never take Minnesota now, even though I have, even for me, I have a lot of options for those other weeks. Minnesota is the least favorited and has the smallest EV of these other b- – between this group of four teams we're talking about now. So this would really be probably the worst spot to take Minnesota of the four weeks I'm talking about, 10, 11, 13, and then th- in this particular week. Uh, and you just have to look at week by week. Like week 11 is a really good one to look at. Uh, Minnesota is again when I say like the third be- biggest favorite, they're going to be tied with a, you know a few a couple other teams. But some people have already used Detroit and San Francisco by this point. So if Hell you've yeah. used Detroit and San Francisco, you yep. can't take Minnesota this week. Um, I, I have I have all three of those teams available. So I I could use Minnesota, but if you've taken Detroit and San Francisco already you really don't want to take Minnesota because otherwise the next biggest favorite is going to be Miami. And Miami is a team I'm personally never going to take that week because Miami is fully available to everybody. I'm going to fade them. And then that would force me to drop to, to, you know, to a lower team. A lot of people have used the jets. You would never use Philadelphia here. Um, and after not, that, not, not, not to mention, not to mention that Miami, you could use them in 12, like rather handily. Mm-hmm. So you have to look at a, what teams you've already used, B, what teams you don't want to use, C, what team, what games you don't want to take. And in that case for week 11, you don't want to take Miami. My, Miami is going to be the, the chalkiest pick that week, as long as two is still playing, even if he's not playing, I mean, they're, they're going to, they're yeah. going to be picked. So, you want to have more options and in, 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 in eliminating Minnesota from your, your possible selections for 11 would be a mistake, especially since you can take three other teams with higher EV and higher win percentage in week nine. So for, for me, Minnesota, I, I have very strong entries. Again, I, I say that because I take a lot of chances last year. I was more or less out of, like everything after what, like four or five weeks. I mean, I was literally out of my last pool after the second week, I was out of most of them. And the year prior to that, I won. And, 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 and the year prior to that, I lost in week five again. So when, when I make it to this stage, my entries are going to be very strong. So I, I, even though your picks are going to determine what you should do, if I feel that for me, Minnesota is a save, then with, with a really strong entry, the average entry should probably lay off too because their entry is probably not as strong as mine. And if you have doubles, you just want to hold on to Minnesota because weeks ele- regardless of when your doubles are, because some pools have doubles in 5, 10, 15. Well, they, you know, they're at Jacksonville in 10. Uh, they're, they're hosting Chicago in 15. My my pick my pool my other pool has doubles in twelve and uh, twelve and thirteen. They play Arizona in thirteen. So Minnesota is just is, for almost every person. You should probably just lay off of Minnesota. Um. Okay. What do you think of the other three? The Balt. How do you separate Baltimore? Uh, Baltimore, New Orleans. I mean, the more I'm, the more I'm even thinking about this. I mean, how is Baltimore? Baltimore, Baltimore, and New Orleans have to be just much better than Cincy, I guess. Um, what, yeah. what do you think of those three? I, I love when it's easy. I, I mean, like, I mean, last week I took Denver as a yeah. you know pretty chalky team. I mean, but you know they passed that threshold for me. They had they had, they were useless, you know, going forward. They were you know the highest or second highest favorite um, of the season. You know, if you want to throw some things that really don't matter in there, you know, one team's you know 
you know, done for the season. The other seat, the other team has to win to preserve, you know, this is the, their best game the rest of the season, playoff chances, all that. I mean, I mean, New Orleans fits the same bill and somehow they're only, I mean, there's, they're, they're going to be higher than 6% pick, but I mean, New Orleans is an absolute slam dunk. This is, this is like some of the, I'm having flashbacks to, uh, Cincinnati, Miami, Thursday night football a, a, a few years ago, uh, the week after Chua got hurt, where you know Cincinnati was like four percent picked or something, and you know we both loved them that week. Um, it, where some of these Thursday games, where you know it ends up being like you know the highest EV play, and no one even no one even thinks about it. I mean, that's what Baltimore. That's what New Orleans is looking right now. This is this is their best game the rest of the season outside of like Las Vegas. But in order for the Las Vegas one to be valuable, they have to they really have to win this one. Um, this is this is a phenomenal, and they they have Cleveland at eleven as well. But the, there's a there's a lot of choices in eleven that are better than them. This this is their best spot. Uh, I, I again I would like them even if they were twenty five percent picked. So I'm I'm getting a huge bargain here. You, you, you have a seven eight point favorite, best game the rest of the season, and I'm never taking Kansas City or Philadelphia. I'm never going to go all in on one team across my four remaining entries. So New Orleans is an absolute automatic. For, for me, it's going to be deciding how many of them to use and and who to pair them with. Um, but uh, New, uh, you know, just it, I think you can easily just rank it on. I'm going to rank this on, on future value. New Orleans I, I agree, has the least and then Baltimore has the most. And if your pool is going to go, you know, if your pool has three, you know, five people left, you know, I would, I would heavily entertain going Baltimore. Um, I, I'd probably go Baltimore over New Orleans, one, but. One other, um, one other thing that, again, I want to talk about as far as the mapping goes, I reason why I left this up and I agree. I think New Orleans is definitely the best play. They, they just are. Um, they have the same, and again, let's just put. Would you would you say that if they're twenty five percent? Well, I, I, well, I, if I, they were twenty, I well, no, like because them. if they were twenty five percent, then their EV would be much lower. And well, I wouldn't. Well, not not in terms of EV, but for for your liking. I, that wouldn't really matter too much because, again, I again the, the more the the popularity goes up, the more the EV goes down. It makes it a little easier for me. So, like, if they, for example, if they were Cincinnati's pick percentage. Then and since they're the same win odds, they would look like Cincinnati. You know what I mean to me, and they I would still like them more than Cincinnati. Okay, I'll put it that way. Like if, if New Orleans were twenty percent and and Cincinnati were twenty percent somehow, I would still like New Orleans more than Cincinnati. Um, the thing about the Baltimore and the, the is, is this um, one of my entries, and if I do play a Baltimore, I know which one I would play. For if you have San Francisco available. Um, in your in your entries, um, San Francisco is going to be an extremely high leverage play in Week 15, um, because no no one's no very few people have them available now anyway, and and some of those people that have them available are going to use them in San in, in 11, um, the, particularly everybody who played Detroit already, right? So the people who played Detroit and have San Francisco available. We'll use a, San Francisco to some degree in 11. So w- after all that is, is said and done, there's not going to be a soul left with San Francisco. And you're going to be fighting like a pretty, ch- probably a fairly chalky Dallas, you know? And and so you don't need Baltimore as much in 15 in, in an entry that has San Francisco. So I, I would just, I, I would say that. You, uh, yeah, you, you definitely jogged my memory there on on week fifteen. As as much val, uh, future value as Baltimore looks to have, if Dallas is in a good position playoff wise with four, uh, four weeks to go, yeah, everybody has Dallas available. But well, no, that's know. not necessarily true because in thirteen, Dallas might be played home against. Oh, the- no, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry that 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 that's true. But between um, thirteen, I mean, but again, but but right now they're a hundred percent available. Dallas, so so yeah. they're so so they're, not everybody's going to use them there. There are people that will play Kansas City. There are people that 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 play. Well, actually, no one will play Tampa. I don't think because they can play Tampa in seventeen. Maybe Minnesota might be very Minnesota might be huge chalk that week, you know, depending on whether Arizona gets 
it's good or not. Um, week 15 is a lot more interesting. Uh, th- 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 this, this is, this is week 15 is how I was justifying playing Baltimore, even though it looks like Baltimore is needed. They're really not as needed because if Dallas gets their right. act together and they win some games, they're going to be 11, 12, 13 point favorites there. They, they, they yeah. just are. And mm-hmm. You know, you know, some people are going to have, you know, the Rams, you know, their season might be over. San Francisco, maybe they actually accidentally get healthy. And then you have multiple 10 point favorite games. You have like three of them. And that you'll have to pick one of them. And even if it's, you know, you're just going to take, if you only have one of them, you're going to take that team regardless. Even I would. I'm not going to drop to, well, I guess Arizona is there as well. But so that could be, that could get interesting as well. Cause if Arizona, puts himself in a good position and that's where well I mean that's not Minnesota's best spot but it's so far out you know if Chicago's out and Minnesota you know keeps you know winning most of their games you you see a lot of higher point spread games the end of the season when it's playoff contender versus you know team uh, you know team turning it in but 15 definitely gives reason to you know be allowed to play Baltimore now and get away with it and you know you're you're just betting on Dallas, uh, there, you know, being there for you. There's one other consideration, though. Okay, so and this depends on what type of pool you're in. Like if 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 okay, so my run your pool thing's got 60 people left. My DraftKings one's got you know three two two seventy. Your big your small one has 17. Your bigger one has has a couple of hundred. Um, while it's not necessary to play Baltimore for 15. Having Baltimore for 18 is going to be pretty important, uh, especially if you are somebody like me and already burned Atlanta in some in some in some variations. Um, because Atlanta, again, week 18 could be anything, right? Teams could be locked in. Teams could rest all their starters. So to to project ahead to 18 is is kind of fool's gold a little bit, but but it's certainly worth considering. Um, and if if I have an entry that burned Atlanta, for example, and also burned Buffalo, eighteen it becomes quite the crapshoot. Um, so to have Baltimore available for eighteen, uh, uh, in addition to fifteen, uh, is is the counterpoint to my point. You know what I mean? Is is may, maybe you still want to but want to want to save Baltimore? And now we're still that now now we're we're talking about what what your what your particular entr- entries look like. You know whatever it is. And how big the pools are, and all that stuff. But this- I, I I like that thought because again, it's not saving a team for eighteen; it's having them as an option where you can still use them in fifteen or sixteen. I mean, you know, by just by sorting, Baltimore is the third. You know, the right there, the third biggest favorite in week in week sixteen. So you have three options for the you know the last four. Uh, for for Baltimore, you know, to, it's not like they're you know they have an island pick at the end of the season that you're just you know hoping you know comes through. You you're either going to use them right now, or you're going to save them for the last four weeks and and then just see what happens. And 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 either option really is fine. The less people you have in your pool, if if it's conceivable that your pool could end you know before fifteen, then you know you should, right. you should strongly consider you know Baltimore should come much more into weight because the only reason yeah. I'm weighing new Orleans and Cincinnati over Baltimore is because Baltimore, I, I just, I, I favor them more than the others, but uh, for the, for the last four weeks, of the season, but Cincinnati's isn't bad either. No, um, no. It, you know, they've got, they got three game They have three games all in a row uh, at Tennessee, Cleveland, Denver. So th- those are all, th- those are also all very favorable. And again, the more options there are, the more reason there is, you know, to hold on and to hold on to that team to, tr- you know, try to realize that stretch. This, Car- uh, this this Carolina thing is 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 every every year there's a team like this, you know, that that kind of like uh, that that drives the whole grid, you know, and and and, and for better or worse. And you know, Car- I thought at the beginning of the year was going to be New England, um, and to some degree that's still the case, but. Um, but uh, like for example, like in week in week ten, like I can't imagine how popular they're going to be. But but Chicago, home against uh, Denver is going to be. Uh, I mean, home against New England. I was going to say, 
they're going to get really crammed. Yeah, um, I hope they. I hope they get the job done. I mean, I might third have big, to, that'd be the third big yeah. upset, and I have no Chicago available. So yeah, that's the you know, that's one of those things. It's like they're going to get crammed, and if you have them available, it's going to be tough not to play them. Um, yeah, and I and I don't have them. I've used them in all four of my entries. So, but, but now all easy. of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Chargers, you know, they're 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 just as good as Chicago now over there. And that's I don't know. We'll see. But, um, but I want I want to talk about my you know the, my other pool, and, and I like double picks uh, for a couple reasons. The the first one, when you get to those double pick weeks, the, 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 you can you can make up you can make up a lot of ground um, if, if if you go if you play it aggressively, but. What I also really like about it is it helps make my decision. It helps my decision making process. It it, just, it expedites it because the way I look at it is I want to have as many many teams as possible for the double pick weeks. And and it's very simple. I I go to the survivor grid and if I see a bunch of green on the double pick weeks and I'm choosing between five teams, I throw out the ones with a bunch of green on those weeks and. You know, it, it it just makes it very simple. So for the teams that I'm I'm considering this week for double picks, again, we have doubles in, in 12, 13, and 16 out. So obviously Kansas City, I mean, it's Kansas City and Philly, I, those are throwouts anyway. But especially in that format, you you can't take Kansas City this week. 12 and 13, they're the biggest, they're the biggest favorite. And the pool is 100% going to make it at least a week 13, even if there's an, you know, you know, catastrophic events between now and then, it's going to go to at least week 13 with 500 people left. And then you look at the other, you know, you look at the other weeks. Okay, well, Buffalo, we were also throwing out. And then, you know, we got, I mean, New Orleans, there's there's, there's no green. I mean, you know, you know, it's, it's a team that I'm just going to have to, I'm going to have to use in double picks. And luckily their EV is very high, but even if their EV was like, one, I, I, I would I would still favor them over Baltimore because I would like to have Baltimore for 15 or doubles in 16. Uh, the the least the less people that have them available, the more valuable you know those teams come, especially in, in a double picks format. The same thing with Cincinnati; they, they uh, they're viable in 15, 16, and 17, and and two of those weeks are doubles. And every year that I've played this pool outside of one. It's made it to week 16. Uh, there was the, the, well, that one year where I think there were – there was one week where nine, uh, nine or ten underdogs um, won, and, and, that, and, and one, one of those happened on double picks week, and, and that, that'll, get, that'll get the job done. But other than that, this thing's going to go to week 16. So very, very simple selection process in my doubles picks. I, I want to have the strongest uh, you know, teams for those double pick weeks. So – I'm probably going to go to New Orleans and one other. I, I, but you know what? I might just go all in on New Orleans. I, I just, it is, you know, it, it it's a it feels risky, but at the same time, if I make it through, then I have all of my Baltimore and all of my Cincinnati available in weeks that the pool is going to make it to that point, and those are very very strong teams to have. And yes, I if, if they lose, I'm out. But if I make it there, it makes all of my entries that much stronger. So the and, way, and, that, and, and that's worth taking the risk sometimes. So the way, so the way the way you the way you do this, right? So I'll just take everybody on kind of like a tour and how I make my decisions. So like I'm so I'm between these those four teams, like to some degree, like New Orleans, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and Minnesota. All right. So we all agree New Orleans is kind of the best play. So we look at this first pool here. Well, you know what? The first decision's made for me because I took New Orleans in week one. Okay. So that that that's easy, okay. So now I go go down to the next one, okay. So if I take Baltimore, um, uh, for example, um, what's good about that again is this this entry has San Francisco available for fifteen, so I can get away with it, you know. Um, this one also does not have Buffalo available for sixteen, so it is important to save uh, something like Cincinnati, okay, for for sixteen. Um, so assuming that Baltimore is the next best play outside of New Orleans, you know, that becomes kind of easy here in this other entry. This one has New Orleans available. And since it's the best play, I may as well play him. OK, so 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 New Orleans ends up over there. Now, where it becomes interesting 
is in the third one in in is this is where I'm struggling, like in the DraftKings one. So this one, I do have New Orleans available. So in, in a pure sense, I should probably just take them, you know, and play two New Orleans and two and one uh, and one uh, and one Baltimore. F Cincinnati, save them. F Minnesota, save them. But what I and this is being a hedge fund manager or whatever, I I think about the possibility of taking like Minnesota or Cincinnati specifically for diversification purposes, in, unless I really felt New Orleans was just that much better than them. And, and I might, all right. And this is, this is really the one pick that I'm going to, I'm going to kind of mess around with and struggle with. What's bad about this entry is number one, it's got Buffalo burned, all right. In 16. Uh, the other thing, this also has San Francisco burned. All right, so so this one's going to need Baltimore, all right, for sure. It's probably going to need Cincinnati for sure. This one, not to mention this burned Atlanta, so eighteen is going to be in need. So so uh, this one, I probably should play the Saints, okay, but I might at the end of the day play Minnesota. <laughs> I don't, and it's, again, we're and we're gonna we're gonna and me and my partner are gonna yell and argue about that forever. Um, but uh, uh, so far, those kind of like coin flip decisions at the end, I've been we've been pretty good about. You know, we haven't we haven't done, done anything terrible. Uh, we didn't get punished yet. You know, for for just making some stupid play. Um, so that that's gonna be where I spend them. You know, pretty much all of my brain power uh, on this, and it's not gonna be probably that much, but. Uh, we'll watch the odds. We'll see whatever. And with any with any luck, we'll we'll come up with some. And then for the the comment I made earlier, the, I, the the key thing for my pool right now for sixteen left is Philadelphia. I th so again Philadelphia in week four, fourteen. Okay, so looking at week fourteen, they're they're hosting Carolina. We're looking at you know seventeen, eighteen, you know twenty one point spread. You know, more or less, what's called a what? 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 What have you called that? A uh, in the what, what? A couple, a couple seasons. You said, uh, what, what? What did you call an automatic win week? A lot. What do you mean? Uh... No, yeah, I think you had another term. Uh -huh. Um, that I can't remember. Um, oh, what's his name? I don't. I can't keep up with all that. <laughs> uh, but okay. But af after Philadelphia, you look at what other people are going to have to take that are not taking Philly. Okay? Yeah. Good luck to you guys. Seriously. They're like, taking, they're taking San Francisco. And again, they, I don't, they don't, have, they don't in my have, other pool, I don't have two of them, but yeah. you know, they have, so we have Carolina, I'm sorry, we have Philadelphia and then San Francisco. A lot of people won't have San Francisco available good and luck. then Kansas city. You're not going to use them. Even if you, well, no, 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 no one will have them left. So now we're looking at, it's it, it, we're looking at Tampa and actually, They've been used a little bit, and then mo a lot most people have used Detroit. So we're looking at a almost as it is right now a two touchdown advantage over the people that have not taken um, that, that have already taken Philly in Week 14. If you get to take Philly, so this week I'm not doing this because it, it, it doesn't matter. But for Week 10, 11, and the week I'm not taking uh, the Chiefs. So twelve or thirteen. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be I'm going to be full mapping on a spreadsheet every entry that has that has not used Philadelphia, and I'm going to try to guess who they're going to take each week between ten, eleven, and then twelve and thirteen. And what I want, what I'm going to, be, what I'm personally going to be doing, I don't know if this is correct, but because my my hammer week is going to be for uh, that Philadelphia and fourteen. I want to have – I do not want to get on an island with the other Philadelphia available players on, on teams in those other weeks. I want, to have you, I want to have a unique pick. I'm not going to do anything ridiculous like taking, you know, a one- or two-point favorite or a pick them. But I, if, if I can – if I feel that in, in between t 10 and 13, outside the week I take the Chiefs, I'm going to be taking – four, five, six point favorites, because that's what really everyone's going to have to take in some of these weeks. If, if you don't, uh, if you don't take, like as an example, in week 10, you know, I could probably just get away with taking the chargers 
and then hoping Chicago loses because most people have Chicago left. And then if Chicago loses, that could knock out some of the Philly people. But I, I want to get to I want to get to week 14 as the only one with Philly. So I'm going to be looking yeah. at all the entries that have Philly available. I'm going to try to predict who they are picking from in each week. And I'm going to try to pick the team that is going to be the least picked of all of those people that have Philly available to, in, to increase my chances, to give myself a, a chance to get to 14 with the only one with Philly left. Because if I'm able to do that, I'm going to be, as it is right now, a two touchdown advantage over every, over every single uh, opponent left. All right. I think we are done and I have to go, go anyway. Uh, good luck, everybody. For me, uh, I think we've all gone over who we're going to be rooting for at very no least. Sense. The very least, we're going to be rooting for the Saints. Good luck. I everybody. think I, I think I'm piling on Saints. Go Saints. See you later. See ya.